Welcome to Western Vascular Institute. We're here in our Mesa office in our uh, varicose vein uh, surgery center. So what we have here today is a interesting case. This is a 74-year-old gentleman who has a very long-standing history of symptomatic varicose veins and venous insufficiency. And what that is that we've identified on ultrasound, I'm going to show you that in a second, is a very large superficial incompetent or non-functioning vein called the greater saphenous vein that runs from the groin all the way down to the inner ankle. And you'll see that real soon on ultrasound, what I mean by being incompetent. So when he stands and sits for prolonged periods of time, the blood pools in the lower leg. And when the blood is pooling, the, the blood dilates those varicose veins and those incompetent or non-functioning veins in the lower calf and a lot of the iron and the pigment in the blood can get deposited into the skin and cause a leathery appearance or chronic damage, permanent damage to the skin. We call that lipodermatosclerosis, big medical term for just scarred tissue from all the pooling of blood in those veins. He also has a venous ulceration, which is this little wound down by our entry site. We've already gained access into the greater saphenous vein and right near it and on the other side are little ulcerations that have developed due to all the pressure on the skin down there. And that's one of the big complications, the main complication that you can get from persistent incompetent veins or non-functioning veins is this bad fibrotic dark skin discoloration with the swelling and eventually the erosion through the skin causing ulcerations. This particular gentleman has had at least two or three episodes of infectious or cellulitis or inflammation of the skin with bacteria where you required antibiotics. And this has been a persistent thing with him also having these venous ulcers. They heal, they come back, they heal, they come back. So we were able to bring him in after our initial consult and we did an ultrasound and we looked at the, the superficial veins in the legs and we saw that they were grossly non-functioning and incompetent. They're dilated and the valves are just not pushing the blood back to the heart the way they're supposed to. So what we will do right now is kind of show you what I'm talking about. So this is, on the bottom part of the screen is the deep artery in the vein. We're not interested in that. We're interested in the superficial dilated greater saphenous vein. This runs about an inch deep in the thigh in the layer of the fat and it's grossly dilated. It should be the size of a pencil. It's probably the size of my index finger which is not normal. And then you see it grossly dilated with some branches coming off of it, which are also contributing to the swelling in the leg. Those branches are also bad. And this vein along the calf was also dilated, but because we put a sheath and a wire up there, it spasmed up a little bit. Previously, when we looked at it, it was about the size of my index finger. So what we're gonna do right now is what's called a radiofrequency ablation procedure or a closure, pr closure procedure. It's a catheter that has this copper color at the tip and that's the heating element. So we're gonna pass this up that dilated vein from here all the way to the groin, a safe distance away from the deep permanent veins. We don't wanna be close to that. And we're basically gonna heat this vein closed and shut it down. So when he's sitting and standing in the future, all that column of blood with gravity is not gonna pool down that dilated incompetent vein because the vein will be gone. We shut it down. There are also other veins in this particular gentleman called perforator veins. Those are the veins in the calf down here that connect the deep veins, the permanent veins to the superficial veins. We most likely will have to treat that and also in the back of the calf, there's a long parallel vein called the lesser saphenous vein that we're gonna to have to treat as well. So what we're gonna do now is to put his legs up and head down to empty the blood out of this vein so we have much more closer contact of the vein wall to the actual heating element of the catheter. And then we're gonna numb up the whole leg with an anesthetic solution and a saline solution to kind of coat that vein with an anesthetic and fluid so he doesn't feel the discomfort of the procedure and the heat of the catheter while we're closing the vein. We have lifted his legs up to empty the greater saphenous vein. And you see it's a lot smaller with the legs up. That's the whole point of it. We wanna collapse the vein so it has more intimate contact 
with the heating element of the catheter or the ablation catheter. So now we're going to numb up his leg with some of the anesthetic solution. You're going to feel a little poke here, a little poke. You're going to feel a little small needle and then just a little bigger needle, okay? We're going to put that solution around that catheter so you don't feel that heat when we start closing that vein, okay? So right now we're injecting the what we call tumescent solution, which is basically just anesthetic fluid around that vein. We like to go next to the vein, above the vein. That black fluid you're seeing is just surrounding that catheter, which is that white dot with that black line going down the screen. So the more solution we get around it, the better, so he's not feeling any discomfort during the procedure. And we're going to do this all the way down the leg. So all that black fluid surrounding that white dot in the middle of the screen, which is the catheter, but that black fluid is all the anesthetic solution. And we, we do that so he doesn't feel pain, but also that anesthetic solution also contributes to collapsing that vein so that it has more intimate contact with the heating element of the catheter. These procedures nowadays are always done on an outpatient basis. Hospitals really don't even offer this procedure. They used to about 10 or 12 years ago. So patients usually come in, they go through the check-in process. And we give them the oral medication for sedation and you know, go through the procedure like we're showing you now. And then afterwards we get them into compression stockings and some activity. You wanna keep walking and keep active, you know, basically normal lifestyle. Patients can sometimes go back to work the next day. We've had a lot of patients go back to work the next day and exercise, you know, relatively quickly if they like to exercise or have a workout routine. Uh, very little downtime. That's the benefit of this procedure. Very little downtime. And much, much, much easier than the old-fashioned vein stripping, which required hospitalization and general anesthesia and a lot of post-operative pain. We prefer the radiofrequency ablation procedure as opposed to the laser uh, ablation or EVLT, they call it, endovenous laser treatment. We had the laser and we don't use it because we kind of found that there was quite a bit of pain during the procedure and uh, a lot of bruising after the procedure. And we also found on follow-up ultrasound testing that the, the laser had a, a bit higher rate of the veins opening up again. So we kind of abandoned it a number of years ago. We still have it, but we don't use it. The closure fast system or the endovenous uh, radio frequency ablation we found to be much better. We've hardly had any open up over the years. And then when you check this in follow up, you're going to see that the vein is going to be just full of hard clot. It's not going to be compressible. It's going to essentially have no flow in it. And then if you check it again in six months or a year, you're not even going to be able to see the vein. It's going to shrink to a little fibrotic core and basically be invisible. And that's the goal. We don't want this vein filling up with blood and every time that he stand up, gravity is going to be his biggest enemy and he's going to have all the blood pool down by the ankle and by the calf and contribute to worsening discoloration of the skin and recurrent ulcers and higher risk of cellulitis or skin infection from bacteria. We typically like the patients to wear compression stockings as long as they can tolerate it after this procedure because it collapses the vein and assures that, you know, when they stand up, there's no more blood that will get into that vein or reopen that vein. And it all varies on how long you have to wear stockings afterwards. Okay.
So we're going to go ahead and start the ablation procedure. We position the catheter up top and we're basically going to go in little segments like this all the way down the leg at 20 second uh, intervals. They also have markers on the catheter that kind of tell us how much to pull back between each segment. So basically that, that copper tip we talked about is just going to uh, injure the inner lining of that vein with the heat source and basically cause it to collapse and not open up again. So we're going to go ahead and start. All right, sir, let us know if you feel any discomfort or any burning in your leg, okay? We're starting the procedure right now. Patients usually tolerate this very well after the numbing medicine and with the oral sedation medicine. So here at Western Vascular Institute, we're fortunate enough to have a number of uh, surgeons who are also board certified wound care specialists. So we kind of have a comprehensive approach to treating these patients. You know, he is also on a special medication uh, that we put him on to kind of speed up the ulcer healing and to help with some of the damage uh, that has gone on over time with all this pooling of blood down here and injury of the skin due to his uh, venous insufficiency. And we also, you know, do wound care here in the office and clean up the wound and, you know, advise again, advise with uh, topical medications to stimulate the wound to heal. And we kind of feel like vascular surgeons are best positioned with their experience and training to be treating venous insufficiency. So what you hear from our machine generator here that's connected to our catheter is that beeping. Go ahead. And we're just kind of moving it back segment by segment with, you know, you see these markers on the catheter there. We're just moving it back segment by segment and heating the inside of that vein uh, with the heating element at the tip of the catheter. And it's basically destroying the inner lining of the vein and collapsing it. So we're kind of following the ablation process. You hear that beeping, the catheter is working, it's burning the inner lining of the vein. And the tip of the catheter is right around there. So our, our heating element is somewhere around right there. So we're gonna move it back a little bit more and we're gonna go ahead and do another segment ablation of that vein. And now you see the catheter, which is that white dot in the middle of the screen. It's right there, so our heating element is right around there. And we're just gonna proceed all the way down the leg and kind of treat that dilated vein and shut it down so it doesn't fill up anymore and cause all this brown discoloration and aggravate these ulcers back here. So this is an image above where the catheter is. The catheter is right here, so the heating element's right around there. So you can see all that, that vein above it, it's all closed up which is exactly what we want to see. All right, one more. So we're just going to pull the catheter back another segment. And you, I got the catheter in the middle of the screen right there. You see that black line going down the screen in the middle? That's the catheter. We're going to pull it back another segment. And it's right there. So our heating element is right around there. And we're going to go ahead and ablate that area right now. So patients with venous insufficiency or non-functioning veins, dilated veins with non-functioning valves, they, they can present in different ways. They can present like this gentleman with the venous ulceration right there and brown skin, or you can also have very large bulging varicose veins that are symptomatic throughout the leg. You don't see the large bulging varicose veins. I'm just gonna pull the catheter back a little bit and go ahead and ablate there. You don't see the large bulging varicose veins on this gentleman, but we certainly showed you on the previous images that the veins were extremely dilated and non-functioning. So when he stands, all that column of blood with gravity is going down to the lower leg and causing the damage and the ulceration on the skin. So what we're doing with ablating this vein is essentially forcing the blood and the venous return into the deep veins. Every time you walk, your muscles contract, the deep veins are inside the muscles, and we're kind of redirecting the blood flow into the deeper veins and away from the incompetent superficial veins. All right, so that's the last segment ablation. This is the heating element that we talked about earlier. That was inside of the dilated greater saphenous vein. So essentially what we did, and you saw it on ultrasound, is we passed it up to about that level, and we just moved it down. 
station by station and heating up that vein as we go down. And this was done all the way down the leg to shut down that dilated vein. Again, that vein was at least the size of my index finger and it should be the size of a pencil. So it was essentially not competent, non-functioning valves in the vein. So every time he stands up, that vein fills up and dilates and causes a lot of pressure and skin discoloration down here and aggravating the ulcerations that he has around the ankle causing pressure to the veins underneath the ulceration. So what we're gonna do right now is put a little antibiotic cream over the ulcers. That is our cannulation site, a little tiny stick there. And then we're gonna wrap the leg up and we're gonna have him follow up in a couple of days for an ultrasound to make sure everything is closed and see how he's doing clinically. We're all done, sir.